In this example, we first of all need to work out the components parallel and perpendicular to the surface of the velocity before the collision. Once we've done that, then we can apply conservation of linear momentum parallel to the initial surface and Newton's experimental law perpendicular to the initial surface. This will give us two equations involving v1 and theta, which we can solve simultaneously. This diagram is showing the impact with the vertical surface. We already know that v1 is 3.77 meters per second, and the angle it's coming in at that vertical surface will be 90 minus the value of theta from the first part, and therefore is 66.6 .6 degrees. Once again, we need to work out the components of the velocity parallel and perpendicular to the vertical surface, and then apply conservation of linear momentum parallel to the vertical surface and Newton's experimental law perpendicular to the vertical surface, and then solve these simultaneously to work out the value of alpha and V2. This second example is very similar to the first example, except that we don't actually know the numerical value of the speed of the object before it impacts with the horizontal surface. So all our calculations will be in terms of U. We first of all need to work out the components of the velocity parallel and perpendicular to the surface before impact. We can then apply conservation of linear momentum to get a, a, an equation connecting V1, alpha and U and Newton's experimental law perpendicular to the surface to get another equation connecting V1, alpha and U. We can solve these simultaneously to work out the value of alpha. We could work out the value of V1 in terms of U, although we can see in the second part of the working, we don't have to do this. In this second collision, we've got the object coming towards the vertical wall with a velocity V1, which we can have worked out in the, in the first bit of the working. Um, and it's coming at an angle of 90 minus alpha, and then it's coming away from that vertical wall with a velocity v2 at an angle beta. We can work out the velocity parallel to the vertical wall and perpendicular to the vertical wall before impact, and then apply conservation of linear momentum parallel to the vertical wall and Newton's experimental law perpendicular to the vertical wall to enable us to work out an expression for v2 in terms of u. Having got V2 in terms of U, we can then work out the kinetic energy of the object after both collisions, the kinetic energy of the object before any collisions, and therefore see how much of the kinetic energy has been lost. As the surface is horizontal, we just need to work out the component of the velocity parallel and perpendicular to that horizontal surface before impact, apply conservation of linear momentum parallel to the horizontal surface, and Newton's experimental law perpendicular to the horizontal surface to enable us to work out the velocity v and the angle alpha. A diagram is very useful to help us visualise what's happening in this second impact. We know that the objects come away from the horizontal surface at an angle alpha. We know that the uh, second inclines at 60 degrees to the vertical, and therefore we can relatively easily work out the angle beta as shown in the diagram. This diagram shows the impact with the plane that was inclined at 60 degrees to the horizontal. So the uh, object is now coming in with a velocity of 0.95 at an angle of 68.28 and coming away from the plane with an unknown speed and an unknown angle. We can 
work out the components of the velocity before impact parallel and perpendicular to the surface and then apply conservation of linear momentum parallel to the surface and Newton's experimental or perpendicular to the surface to enable us to work out the required angle and the required speed.